Hi, this is Srinivas Tamada, founder of Knowledge.info. This video is about creating a mock server for your development work. So, as I promised, I need to continue this uh, series uh, for the Ionic and Angular project. It's basically Angular project 2 with the using of Ionic modules. But while you're developing this project to connect with your uh, real time APIs, you need a mock server to test your uh, development thing. So basically the environment will be like this. Uh, every project, Angular or React project, it will give you environment files. So there you can configure. Whenever you work as a developer, it connects to the mock server. Mock server is nothing but all the JSON responses uh, you enable with a node. And all the production built is going to the live. Basically you have to sync your uh, mock service with the production server so that you cannot depend on the you know the live environment and if you want you can do multiple scenarios to test with a mock server so that you can you know guess the production issues very quickly so it is pretty simple i'm going to use node and express uh, server to create a mock server uh, let's create that uh, go to the project and create a create a folder called like you know make directory like server and then cd server so if you see that this is an empty folder uh, now then just initiate your npm so this basically creates the package.json if you go on to quickly create it just give y it by default it creates it if not you can just give your uh, project details like mock server and then the version you can continue the description like mock server for front end apps and then entry point i'm going to give like server.js and ignore this and you have any git repository you connect it here and keywords if you want you can give like node and server and then author even give your name i'm just giving my name and then the license is the same so basically this is what the package.json is going to create so i'm just giving yes to confirm let me open the project now yeah see this is what the package.json got created and then uh, now we need to install npm install express this is a framework for the node to create a http utilities and it is a web application framework so you can just give save and if you are uh, using this in the angular or ionic project you no need to do this anyway i'll tell you that later so basically it, it adds the express later version in this and it got created the lock so now i'm going to create a file a folder called mock so here we are going to keep all the mock responses here and then i'm going to create a server file called server.js so here uh, we need to import the express i mean you have to import like using required i need require in the express library and then let app you're going to call the express uh, method and now there are uh, default uh, library things like what port you want to do you can just create those so i'm going to run this project at 8084 basically the angular project runs at 4200 and then the ionic at 8100 so make sure it should be it should be like unique and then there is a by default uh, headers to set and what are the things this is you will get all these things in the express documentation how to create an api I'm using that app and I'm just importing all the headers. And this code is for the uh, parsing the JSON request. And this encodes and it make it uh, available for this API. And the finally like uh, run at this server, like listen at this backend port. The backend port is 8084. So let me save this and run the project like you can just simply run like node server.js so now this is running at 8084 uh, you can run you can connect your project to this port and you can test it but before that we need to create a 
two APIs. I'm going to create login API and the same way feed API. How to create a test APIs uh, for your project. For example, this is my previous project. So once we have a live demo for this, and you can see once I start, there is a login page. Here we need to write one mock, and then once you log in, there is a feed page we need to display it project called the previous one so I'm going to use this uh, this is connected with the live domain so let me open the network and clear it off so I'm going to see this is my username and password when I hit this this is what it got connected this is what the live one I cannot test every time the application with the live one instead I'll take this response I mean the control a control C and come back to the project and I'm going to give user data dot JSON and I'm just pasting it here for the reference the token if you want you can manipulate this so this I already explained if you look at how I'm going to generate this token how I written the live API with PHP you will understand more and the same with the feed I have and I'm going to create a feed API too so just the feed data or JSON so that response saved it so let me clean we don't want all of these so instead I'm going to give the meaningful uh, feed so this using this data you can work with your application dot post if you are writing for a if you are writing for a get you can just change this to get and post need like you know what kind of API endpoint you're going to call this one is login then you start with the function it has three attributes one is request and the response and the next this I will explain later uh, and then uh, start the project I mean the start the function so here like you know uh, like data this is called the data so we're going to JSON parse the request so request come from the body and then I let user name because this one if you look at this uh, login this request need is a username and the password we are sending for the feed we are sending this information so based on that you can configure us so that you can test easily so we need to uh, read this uh, as a like you know request so I'm giving user name so this will be like data dot username the same name we have to give and the password data dot password and now uh, it's a pretty simple if condition to check like you know uh, username you can give your fake username like test user this is for testing uh, which means only with these credentials you can log in and or else you can check with all your MR scen error scenarios test password and then if this is a uh, success like you know you can return response dot status with a code called 200 and then you have to map the JSON of the project so let's import that uh, mock object user data colon required require is nothing but include so the mock and then the user data and the same way for feed data is require and the mock and the feed data I think you no need a JSON is uh, anyway it's nothing uh, change so you can keep maintaining this way and now that uh, you have this reference mock then the user data we are actually pointing here uh, so mock dot user data and else I mean this is not matched with this username and password so then you can just return response like status you can maintain a different status it depends on your production API how it is going to do it um, how you um, written all the status codes but right now I'm giving 200 and 
if you want you can write 500 to test other scenarios as well like this i mean like you know bad request using a password if you want you can keep this in a one uh, json file and you can point it the same thing so if you look at this, this uh, whenever you hit the login, if you test with this username and password, you'll get this response or else you'll get this. You just save it and uh, restart this. Whenever you do changes with the server.json, you just restart it. And now uh, the server is running again. Now you can download this Postman uh, project. I mean, application, it's a Chrome extension. I think it's a Google acquired project. So now this is a post. The project is running at localhost 8084. I mean HTTP. Yeah, so this is what the login. And now we are sending a body response with the raw and the text and plain. So if you see this, this is what the response I'm sending. So basically I'm, I want to give the same one, like you can just give username Test user and the password, test password. So this is the body. I'm just sending the request. You can see it's working or not. If you see the response came, what exactly we gave in this mock. And if you want, you can test a fake one. You send it, you'll get this. So this way you can connect this endpoint and connect work with your application that way you can easily achieve the things because if if any other team or any other people are working on the back-end technology so that way it will not stop your front-end development so that's what the main goal for this mock server if you're kind of comfortable with the live one you can do it but playing with live is not uh, good so the same way for the feed uh, I'm going to add for the feed to uh, go to the project again, go to the server. I'm just copy pasting the same one again for the feed. Instead of this, this is a feed. And here, like, you know, for the feed, uh, if you look at this, this main after once the authentication is done, everything is worked with the token and the user ID. The token basically valid, validates at the backend that token generation should match with the both side. So I have a different mechanism to generate a token. I already explained for the PHP REST API. If you look at, I'll add in the description. So for that, like, you know, this is a token and this is going to be token. And I'm going to read something like user ID. And let's see user ID. These are minimum things. Then right now token is dynamic. So if you want, you can give a specific token to match with it or else you just ignore it. And basically the token is actually related with the user ID. Right now I'm going to give one. And if the token is available and the user ID is one, then you can give this mock dot um, feed data. And then like, you know, uh, if nothing is there, uh, no access. And if you want, you can write another else if statement like only validate the token, then give another message like uh, invalid access, something you can do it. Whatever conditions you want, you can write it. So now the feed also done. We want to change to get, get all the same. I always recommend to write with a post. That way browser will not cache anything in the front end side. If you specifically, uh, any static information only use for get anything dynamic, use the post always. So that's what my recommendation. So now again, let's kill the project and run this project again. So now test, we'll test with uh, feed. And this is going to be token. I'm just giving something now. And this is user ID. Basically, uh, you have to give all these things, but right now I'm ignoring it and you can add it later. Is it really required or not? And this user ID is one. Let me send the request. If you see, I got the same response from this. Like that, you can add multiple data, different scenarios. You can add it and work with it. And 
that's it pretty much if I add something else like a different user I send it we'll get the no access and this is pretty much done and how are we going to work with the actual angular or react project so now if you look at the recent ionic and angular project so this is what the project to continue this project like i need a mock apis uh, so how a project will recognize i mean this way when the user comes the, it goes to the production on the developers this one so every Angular or Ionic project has an environment project environment folder. If you look at this, this is called the environment folder. There is an environment prod.ts and the environment.ts. So here, uh, this is the production files. So whenever you give ng serve, it it takes this. Here you can just configure your API URL to the 8084. But when you give the dash dash uh, prod, like if you look at this. Uh, package.json uh, when you build the project like ng build dash dash prod this automatically picks this the production one and takes the live url so that way like you know uh, if you look at this the angular.json uh, file you will see this configuration for this dash dash prod uh, it will take the so if you look at this it replaces with the prod when you went to the production so so this is what you have to do and copy that server folder here in the same uh, file structure and create all your mocks here like a number of all the data what kind of project you want to do and everything you configure with your api backends like this when you run this project like the terminal like open this project and ng serve for the ionic project let me kill this this is for the angular server and open the new pro new folder and give cd server and then here give node server dot js for the mock so so that you can continue developing with this endpoints i mean localhost 8084 and the slash login so this way you can continue this project for the upcoming video i'm going to continue this uh, series i'm going to talk about the authentication using the mock and the live apis and you will understand more thanks a lot for the watching this video